Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hi, everybody. And this is the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mike Chisholm. He's all the way up there in Canada in his little environs of his Letterman podcast. We should... We didn't mention the last time. Where can they find you with the Letterman podcast? This is all stuff Letterman. Yeah. He it's has no other uh, life. What? No, yeah. no, that's right. Uh, very little, if any. Um, yeah, so you can find us on the YouTube, the, the Letterman, Letterman podcast, and on the major podcast platforms, um, Spotify, Apple, and uh, other various ones that I'm not, I'm not really aware of, but apparently we exist. Uh, Spotify and YouTube include the video version, and, and a lot of the time our guests bring... Like show, I'm a big show and tell guy. I'm a collector. As you can see, the set is all Letterman stuff. Um, there's one of the bridges from Late Show right there behind me, and and, and whatnot. So I uh, people will bring items. They'll have show and tell items. Actually, Jeremy Weiner, uh, a, a writer for for Late Show for a long, long, long time, he had a box in his attic that was all from Late Show, and he knew that there was stuff in there, like a pencil that had gone to space and come back and and had it. We actually did a show and tell episode where he opened the box and went through things real time with me, and there was some really, really cool stuff in there. So the video version is probably better. So Spotify and YouTube is the place to see that. Yeah. Okay. And he also collects old microphones. I do. I do. I, indeed. I, I, I went to look, buy one of those uh, just for the hell of it, just to have it because it's hard. I don't know. That's the mic I started with that and the DX44. Yep. Which was the, I don't the know how to describe one. it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and those were the two mics. So those were the only two mics you ever found in a radio studio, right? Mm -hmm. but that one usually always wound up in the uh, control room. As a mic that was on a stand, while the yep. others were in like a studio where you might do interviews and stuff, and they were, they were, they had other uh, the same kind of stand on them, but they were different. Yep. And uh, they both operated pretty much under the same principle, and I don't know how the capsule microphone came into existence over the other one, but they had two versions, and you've got one of them. So I went to see how much they would cost. They cost a fortune. Yeah, like five grand. <laughs> I mean, really? I thought, uh, just for the hell of it, I want one of those. Yeah. And a five grand? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's crazy. So. And D D the one that Dave had uh, on his desk for years and years and years, there's actually a fun story behind it. Um, th th so he had the microphone that he had at late night when he went from the Diamond 1 to the 77, mm -hmm. And then he had the 77 forever. And that 77 was, uh, that particular one could go back and it had lineage to Jack Parr. And, and, and so Dave had that on his desk and had it on his desk and they stole it from NBC and brought it to CBS and he had it on his desk. And in 1996, they switched the set from the original Late Show set that they came in to CBS with to the one with the bridges. And the at reason, that time, You know the reason why that change was made? Uh, tell me. They, they went from... Uh, uh, Standard definition to widescreen. Uh, I I, know, I think they were maybe prepping for it. No, that's, but it was, that, that's why they in built... 96, 96 already they were doing high def? When they when they built that big set was yes. when they went high def. And Dave yes. was late into getting into high def. Yes. And when they when they changed the set over to the bridges, you might be right. They might they they probably were thinking about high def at that point being the uh, one of the catalysts for it. But well, they also had to build happened, everything wider. The window absolutely was not as wide as the window was later because absolutely. of the of of the wide screen. They had to the adapt letterbox. to it. Yeah, and I and and I loved uh, when when Late Show moved over to high def. It looked. It just looked shiny and beautiful from the opening credits to the to, to the camera shots around of Dave coming in to the, the scope of the theater. Yeah. I love that theater. I know it was it was it was tough for some people. Some people prefer Dave in a television studio. But man, when he was in the Ed Sullivan Theater and he was firing on all cylinders and and, and, and home there, what a what a cool 
place to be and what a cool place to highlight in high definition. It's just beautiful. Everybody ever went to that show in the Ed Sullivan Theater? I, I had people, I would send people over I knew because they, oh, I want to see a, a David Letterman. So I would call Shecky and say, can you do yeah. it? Letterman did not like to have people in the studio who were there for because somebody got them in. He didn't like what? that. Yeah, and also, uh, well, the audience, like, oh, my gosh, we've had David Kay on our show. There has never been a show before or since that has been so meticulous in audience selection, having the right audience, certain people allowed to see, certain people not to be, certain people, okay, you can be in the theater, but don't be an eye shot of Dave because he doesn't like seeing people that he knows. He didn't um, want any executives. And definitely no executives. Uh, opening night, opening night, the executives were in the bar that actually does have a tunnel that goes underneath it uh, uh, to, 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 to the to the secret entrance from that bar. But they all the executives for the opening night of Late Show were in that bar beside <laughs> beside the Ed Sullivan Theater. They they yeah they did not want executives in there at all. Vinny Favalli had a very very cool yeah. position. But, One of the very few but, people that could walk between both worlds. When when, when I then wanted to um, uh, have a friend go over there, they could, and Shecky could get me uh, uh, the ability for them to go over there, mm -hmm. but they had to sit upstairs. Yep. And they used to complain to me, I don't want to sit upstairs. I want to sit down in the front row. And I went, no, you don't. That's no. the best seat in the house, up on the balcony. Yep. Because yep. everybody else is... the 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 stage is being covered by cameras absolutely and personnel so yep. if you're in the front row you didn't see anything no um a month before dave retired i uh i got a chance to be there and for those who are listening you're not going to be able to see this but that's a picture of me and dave um interacting with each other that's me in the front row and that's dave making fun of me to paul schaefer and I'll tell you this, I was so happy to have that seat for the show because the monologue happened right in front of me. And, and, and a month before he retires, not only did I get my interaction with him, that was cool. You know, he did a callback to it on the air. That was amazing. But the fact I got to spend, you know, that seven or eight minutes sitting there watching Dave do his monologue a month beforehand. Mm -hmm. But then the rest of the show, I saw nothing. Like, you, you're exactly right. The rest of the show, John Travolta comes out, uh, Amy Schumer comes out. And at the desk, I'm literally doing this it's being blocked by cameras yeah Absolutely, everybody thought yeah. that was the best seat in the house no it's the worst seat in the house best no. seat in the house front front row balcony front row center balcony we went and saw colbert uh, when i came out for rupert's retirement um in october the night before the retirement party um we got into we, we got to see colbert with guests at cbs and 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 we got to sit front row center for Colbert, and, I, um, and it was it was a fantastic experience you got a bird's eye view of everything it's all right there and it's beautiful in there. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Front row of the balcony is the best seat. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, uh, we're, uh, that's what we're talking about. Uh, anyway, let me just do something here. I want to just sure. change. Uh, there we go. Okay, there, there we are. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I wanted to ask you this because I think that this is worth discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's discuss all of the late night NBC shows and CBS shows. Yep. And start rating them. Okay. Yep. And I will start with one that nobody ever mentions when they're talking about the history of late night. Okay. okay. And that is Broadway open house with Jerry Lester. Yeah. That was the first tonight show. It wasn't yep. called the tonight show. It was called Broadway open house. Uh, and it was basically it was an it was a variety show. Yep. You know, and he had one uh, one woman who was a, very famous on the show. Everybody made jokes about her. Uh, you know, everywhere in the media, mm -hmm. and her name was Dagmar, and she had the largest breasts on television. <laughs> and Jerry Lester, he was a guy who came kind of out of burlesque. You know. Yep. And it was a uh, it was a variety show. It, it didn't mm -hmm. do that well. It did okay, but that was the first show. I don't know if we can rate that, because you know how do you rate something that never had a predecessor? Yeah, I mean, you, as, as as iconic in the sense of of beginning an industry or whatever. But again, the the first guitar player, 
doesn't compare to Jimi Hendrix, but he's still the first guitar player. He's still the first guitar player, but also you have nothing to compare him to. Correct. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's like yeah, it's I the, like I said. People said, "Well, how how was sex the first time you had it?" And I said, <laughs> "I don't know. I never had sex before that, so I had nothing to compare it to." There you go. Anyway, but go. Uh, then we get to Steve Allen. Yes. How do you? Where do you put that in the in uh, in? Well, again, you take you take what what you just talked about the idea of influence, the idea of 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 creating something new. I mean, Steve Allen. You got one of the most talented people who could think on their feet in entertainment history, as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, you got to talk about playing without a net, all the live stuff that he did with the intangibles of how people would interact with him and and how quickly he could uh, react and make hay out of something. I, ha- uh, I, have to, I, I have to disagree with you on a certain okay. level. He would always react the same way. Well, no question. You know, Absolutely. I, I was never a big fan of Steve Allen. I I felt I knew what he was doing. I liked yep. what he was doing. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't overwhelmed by it. Yeah. You know? And how long how, how long was he on the Tonight Show? Was it seven years? Something like that? It wasn't very long. It wasn't, you know, compared I think, to today's yeah, standards. I don't know how long it was. Maybe maybe less than seven years. It might have even been less than that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but the next person who replaced him. Yep. was who I consider one of the greatest of all time, Jack, Jack Parr. Parr. Yep. Now, Parr was different than Letterman, different than uh, Steve Allen, in that Parr was a force within himself, okay? Yes. And that show was the kind of show you watched because you had to watch Jack and see what he had to say tomorrow night about this thing that happened last night. And the that tr- uh, the is something that David Letterman had as well. You know, you want to see what he's going to say about X. You yeah. want to see how this person's going to react to it. But he had a commonality with Dave in that he was the only one of most of the Night Late Show people I know that could ad lib an hour if he had to. Yes. And I think oh, Dave. I think yes. Dave could do that too if he wanted to. I agree. Uh, but. Um, Parr, I thought, was exquisite, and I just absolutely idolized him. So one of my favorite conversations I've ever had with a human um, is talking about Jack Parr. When I had uh, uh, Mr. Dick Cabot on our on our show, and 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 we talked about Dave. We talked about all sorts of things with Dick, uh, but but listening to Dick talk about his reverence. I love for you Jack saying Parr, listening to Dick, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> Um, 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 and enjoying listening to Dick, uh, really enjoying listening to Dick <laughs> talk about Jack Parr and his reverence for Jack Parr was a really special experience because he is just in awe to this day. He's in awe of Jack and, 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 and his abilities, all of his abilities that he had. Jack Parr was, uh, you know, Jack as, as, as Dick terrific. said about Dave, a giant. Just terrific. Which brings us, which brings us to Jack, uh, to Dick Cavett. Yeah. Yeah. Now Amazing. you apparently like Dick Cavett. Well, I I thought that when you're talking about someone where they tried to counter program Johnny Carson, um I I really appreciated Dick's contribution. I I he's an intellectual, uh, extremely witty, um you know, extremely he's brilliant. He's a brilliant man. Um, as well, and, yes. and I thought that his counter programming to Johnny Carson. I think if there was anybody who could counter program him, it would take someone like Dick Cavett, who has a lot of kind of opposite tendencies to Johnny. And, and but I, I go and back so, yeah. and I watch those Dick Cavett interviews. Yep, he's not very good. They don't do anything for you. He's not very good. Okay, you know, uh, he likes to think he was the best interviewer of all time. Doesn't even come close. I mean, you think, does, yeah. does it even come close to Bad Dave back in the late, late, late show days? Uh, late show days, you know. Do you think he's too kind of self-absorbed? Huh? Do you think he's too self-absorbed? No, I just I think he's too in awe of the people he's interviewing. Ah, uh, okay. Well, okay. that might be one of the reasons why I like him because I, well, I, I have that, a little bit that, of that myself. You know, yeah, but that that impinges upon you doing a good interview. Yeah, because then you're deferring to the guy. Anything he says is the funniest thing anybody's ever said. Anything he has to say about the world, oh, he's spot on. 
you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny, I have a link with the, the Cavett show in mm -hmm. that my wife, after we separated, Ronnie, went to work for Dick Cavett for the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she was just answering phones there and doing things like that. Then she went on to be the second in the second. Uh, she was the assistant producer on the Barbara Walters specials. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Was she there mm -hmm. for Dave's? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. She's dead now. I can't ask her. All right. Well, but, you know. But, you know, she would go and interview pre-interviews, people like Anwar Sadat and, you know, all these people that Barbara would go after, you know. And she was a great pre-interviewer. That was her. That was her. Her, her gifting. Her gift. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm making is, I just don't. I, I was never a big fan of Dick Cavett. I just felt for some reason he fell short. The only place he didn't fall short was that he was a great comedy writer. Yes. He wrote great jokes. I think yep. the greatest joke I ever heard him say on his show was, "There was a strike on the Long Island Railroad." And the trains were moving so slowly that the, the, the uh, commuters got so mad, they took a conductor and tied him to the tracks. And the poor guy damn near starved to death. <laughs> yep. That's a perfect Dick Cavett joke. That's a perfect Dick Cavett joke. That's a the perfect other perfect Dick Cavett, Cavett joke. joke is, well, it, you know, New York is so dirty that when it snows and kids make a snowman, they use marshmallows for the eyes. <laughs> that was another one. I mean, he, and I think he's the one that actually came up with a, uh, he, uh, here they are, Dolly Parton. I think he's the one who came up with that. Uh, see, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I have a, I have a great appreciation for, for, for Mr. Cavett. But as a writer, um, he was terrific. But as yeah. a, uh, uh, I just didn't think he was that good. Okay, so now we go on. Well, now to, we got Johnny. Well, now we get. Well, we, oh, we have Johnny. Yeah, we got Johnny now. Johnny, right? Johnny was a master of what he did. Yeah. I am. I have no question about that. Was he good? I think he was terrific at what he did. As one broadcaster looking at another broadcaster. Boy, does that guy have some chops, yep. you know. Uh, and, but every night the show was exactly the same. Absolutely. You know, it yep. never, it was absolutely the same. And uh, I, he, he, to me, he was okay. He's not my favorite. Yeah. But then, then we get to Dave. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and Dave, well, before that you had Tom Snyder, but let's not include Tom Snyder because he didn't do the same kind of show. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And by the way, I was on that Tom Snyder show. You were on the Tomorrow Show? Which yeah. uh, which uh, incarnation? It, it, back in the NBC days before Dave. Before the audience? Before the Rona Barrett stuff? Yep. Like yep. Before, oh, yep. wow. Yep. He hated me. I can't believe we haven't talked about that. He hated me. Really? Well, because I came on as I can't remember what we were doing. I think maybe we were talking about Midnight Blue. I don't know. We were talking about something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the night before, he had had a, a group of left-wing radicals who completely hijacked the show. Okay. So when I came on the next night, and I had the long hair, and I was the hippie there, mm -hmm. he just kept me on edge. He kept me on edge during the commercial breaks. He would start berating me during the commercial breaks. Wow. So when we came back on the air, I'm like this. You know, I mean, he was, he didn't, he didn't want the, the night that happened before to happen again. Okay. You know what's interesting, Alex, is, is uh, when, when I, when people, when I talk to people about you, I have a, a phrase that I love to say, and, and it's, and it's, um, uh, Howard Stern drove on the road that you paved. I love saying that phrase. And I, it's I, that's a very good, uh, I'll have to use that myself. <laughs> please do. Please do. I use it all the time. I, and, 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 um, you know, because a lot of people don't pay attention to the road, but they do pay attention to something that's driving down the road, right? Mm -hmm. But you paved that road, and 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 um, it's interesting because Tom had a very public, uh, you know, uh, stance about Howard Stern as well. And I and I wonder because again, you're that you're that edgy radio guy. I wonder if Tom had a little bit of that same energy that he felt later on, years later, towards Howard. I wonder if he felt that towards you. Um, I think uh, Dave, um, I, th I think Howard uh, did borrow from me. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, and uh, he has and Tom didn't like him. <laughs> Maybe that's why Tom doesn't he, like you. <laughs> he has privately admitted it. Yeah. 
to people, not to me, you know. Uh, when I left Sirius XM, he had his other channel. He had to set two channels, I, and I wanted to get his show on the other channel. He wouldn't even talk to me about it. Oh, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You on Howard 102 would have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but he oh, wouldn't do it. No. He wouldn't do it. He, his people it. would not even entertain the idea. So that's... I wonder if Tom didn't like radio people <laughs> or or extreme like like for, like extreme radio people. No, Tom, we're, we're talking about we're talking about Howard. Well, and Tom Snyder had a very public, you know, disdain or dust up with Howard Stern and and, and had said comments and things like that. This is years after you would have been on the show. But I just it makes me wonder if Tom had a bit of a hate on. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's interesting that you and Howard, who have a lot of similarities in 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 in, in regards to uh, pushing limits in the envelope and things like that, a little bit. Yeah. It's interesting that Tom felt the same I way think, about you that not, he did about Howard. I'm not bragging about me, okay? No, I, I very no. seldom do, but I think the difference between Howard and me is the difference between Kamala Harris and and Donald Trump. Okay. Uh, Donald Trump does everything in a gross, in-your-face way. Yep. There's no subtlety in it. There's nothing. On the other hand, I did it that way. I did it in a very much more subtle fashion yes. with a little more finesse than Howard yeah. ever did it. You yeah. know, you know, Howard, yeah. this is an interview with Howard would do. Oh, those are nice tits. I wish I wasn't married. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it, it was it was just I mean, it worked. You know, sure. I'd like to say he stole from my radio show and from Midnight Blue and combined them together to make the Howard Stern show. There you go. There you go. But I just find it fascinating that Tom both didn't like you and Howard. I find that fascinating. That's good. That's good. I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where, where were we? So we're, we're, we're to Dave. Like, at the end of the day, there aren't a lot of these talk shows. NBC kind of rules the world. You got your Dick Cavitz and Joey Bishops that were there as well. But, but really, at the end of the day, it's an NBC deal. And now is really when the expansion begins, when David Letterman shows up. Uh, with the protection of Johnny Carson, Johnny Carson's yeah. latest contract, he's now a Carson production, and that's what Late Night with David Letterman was. Yeah, and then we get to uh, David Letterman on CBS, yep. but we don't have to talk about that because we've talked well, endlessly about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. He made the big move, and now each yeah. network has two shows, an 11.30 and a 12.30 right. and an 11.30 and a 12.30. So we, that brings us to Conan O'Brien. Yep. Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien is the late night. Is the, is the, I the never thought Jay show. was any good at all. And I yep. really wasn't that fond of, of Conan. I didn't think he really had it. I uh, I adore Conan O'Brien um, because I adore zany. And, and, and zaniness was one of the things that as a kid I loved about Late Night. And I thought out of anybody who took Late Night as a franchise mm -hmm. with... It was a different tone. There's no question. But anybody who actually thought that David Letterman created a franchise that was late night and someone was going to emulate parts of the franchise out of everybody who's hosted late night, I think Conan O'Brien is the guy that tried to do that. He was off the wall. Whether you did like him or didn't like him, the creative zany thing. I just found his personality grating. Yeah. And some people do. Some yeah. people do. Which I, brings uh, us around uh, as we close this thing out to... Yeah. Stephen Colbert. Colbert? Well, okay, hold on. There's a Craig Ferguson along the way that, in my mind, oh, that's Craig the guy Ferguson. That lives in my heart, and I'm going to do a shout out to Craig Ferguson because Craig Ferguson that guy lives good. in my heart. And, and what's his name? Uh, the guy did the Late Show later. So, uh, Corden? No, you know, talking no, about Kilborn. no. Oh, talking about Kilborn. no. Oh, you, yeah, Ferguson. Of course, Ferguson was, I think, brilliant. Craig Ferguson, but I think he he was the master of his own demise. Sure. Because he pretty well told the Letterman people, I want Letterman to do what uh, Carson did. I want him to say he's going to quit in five years and give me the job. Is that, see, I've heard, I've heard. I've heard that I've story. I've heard that, and I've heard the exact opposite as well. I heard he that, said, sto I'm not I heard that story from Shecky. Oh, that's so interesting. That's so and, interesting. And, and that, was the day, that was the day that Letterman and his crew decided, we don't want Ferguson doing the show after us anymore. Oh, that's very interesting. That's inside baseball that I haven't gotten into yet in the Letterman podcast, but I would I would love to talk about that. Um, I remember seeing Craig Ferguson w went on tour, and I think this was even before he announced he was leaving uh, Late Late Show, and he came to my city, 
and and he and 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 Josh Robert Thompson, who played Jeffrey Peterson, the 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 these gay skeleton robots sidekick, they came and they did a show at our community theater, and it was amazing. It was unbelievable, and he talked about it. He said very plainly, "I don't want to be known as in this late night club. I don't want to be that guy. I enjoy doing the show, but I'm not of that world." And and he was he talked about that and 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 it felt earnest. It really did. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of jokes and stuff L- as listen, well. But we've we've run out of time here. Oh uh, my gosh, uh, I'm so sorry. Well, no, I, I, we we we'll, we should do another one of these. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, we will do them in a couple of weeks, but for you, it'll be like a couple of minutes. I love time travel. This you is love, great. Don't you love time travel? Time travel is fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen, that is of course the. Uh, a repository of a show called, a little podcast called The Letterman Podcast. Uh, don't confuse it with anything else Letterman. Uh, no. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes, okay. We really enjoy him. He's okay. He's all right. There we go. I'm having a little bit of problems tonight. I had a little tr- problem earlier uh, when I was opening up the show. Uh, I uh, I did a uh, uh, I, I tried to talk and I didn't hear myself in my earphones. But it's because I had something turned off here. But it was going out anyway. So I don't know whether some of you heard me or didn't hear me or it doesn't matter. What the hell? We don't care. Anyway. Nothing works right anymore, you know. But I'm still learning this board, by the way. This board I bought has got a lot of stuff in it, and I just don't understand all of it. Wait a minute, let me just get rid of somebody here. Uh, There we go. Okay, we get rid of them. And then we uh, admit all of these people here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There's Jeff, and there's uh, Charlie, and there's uh, Brian Neary, uh, or they're kind of there's Brian Neary. It's kind of his table there, but we haven't got him there yet. Uh, Jeff, uh, let's see your head all the way. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, you're doing fine. You, you're not. Uh, you're just uh, talking to us, and we hear you fine, and that's good. Great. Hello, everybody. How are you? So we were all waiting for... um, um, (laughs) We were all waiting for... uh, What's her name? Uh, Kamala Harris to be interviewed by somebody. And she was tonight. Uh, They had her over on CNN in what I thought was a very mediocre interview. Primarily because the interviewer themselves was very mediocre so you know it could have been a better interview in the hands of a better interviewer and they do have better interviewers over at cnn but apparently they decided not to use them instead they used dana bash i think it was or dana bash or dana bash or whatever bash um and it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was okay. What did, what did you think, Charlie? You, you watched it, didn't oh, you? I didn't watch it. You didn't watch it. Why watch didn't you CNN. watch it? I don't watch CNN. Well, so you I'll don't watch wa- the highlights on YouTube. I'm sure they'll be all. Yeah, over but the place. highlights are gonna be kind of like, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, I, I prefer to watch it as they're doing it, so I can hear what goes before it and after it. The, the highlights are just gonna grab part of it you know so anyway uh you know i really wish that uh that uh, zoom hello uh <laughs> that zoom would allow me to um uh remove somebody and then say do not allow them to sign back in but they don't have that feature and so consequently, this guy just keeps a- asking to come on and come on and come on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you on, okay? So don't even try, all right? Uh, and don't try under phony names because I'm not gonna go for that either, right? Uh, and here we go. We'll remove you again, uh, uh, and I'll do it a couple more times, and I'll just let in 
whoever wants to come on this program, come on this program, except for this guy. Anyway, where are we? Oh, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't put the, the, all my people on there. See? I'm out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm gone to a fair thee well. So you didn't see the, uh, see the interview, right, uh, Charlie? No. So, no, I uh, so I can't ask you anything about it. How about you, uh, Jeff? Did you watch it? I watched part of it, and then uh, it was so exciting, I started falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, and that was the fault of the interviewer. Yeah. Don't you think? Uh, oh, let's see here. Now, Alan Munn. No, I don't believe in you either, so I'll remove you. Just don't try. You just keep trying. This guy is just uh, a, a pain in the ass. This is the reason I sometimes think about stop doing this show is because I just don't want to have to put up with this, you know? Uh, oh, and it says, this is Adam Mum. Adam Mum. Boy, that sounds like a real name, doesn't it? You know? Oh, well. Never heard of him. No, I never heard of him either, and it doesn't sound like a real name. At least the guy could try for real names, you know? Um uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, did you watch it, uh, uh, Brian? Uh, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 the the much uh, awaited for interview with Kamala Harris by somebody. Yeah. What? Pam enjoyed it. Get, get Pam on. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Pam. Come on, guys. No, no, well, Pam, we would really like to get your opinion because you apparently watched it and Jeff fell asleep or something. Yeah, Jeff fell said. asleep. Did he? I actually? liked it. I, I, I like her. I think I thought she did what she had to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that I agree. she wasn't perfect. She'll get better. She hasn't done a lot, I think, but <laughs> she didn't fall apart. Well, and... no, I think where the fault was with the interviewer, she was terrible. No, well, she's just blah. But that's that's who she well, is. Well, no, what right? happened was is is she would go after something. Like for instance, uh, Walls was avoiding a lot of stuff. There was a one question they asked him about, and I didn't know this that he had been charged with drunk driving or something. And what did he have to say to that charge? And then he, like a good politician, does he answered every other question in the universe yeah, except I that. I would go there if I didn't get. Yeah, no, that's fine. I would do that. Well, too. I hold that. Haven't again. we all had drunk driving? No. <laughs> I was gonna say, how many people out there have some kind of drunk driving? I've never the- been yeah. arrested for drunk driving. But yeah, I, then I mean, again, I very rarely ever been drunk. So you know, maybe, maybe he'll get some more votes that way too. You never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think it, it was a long time ago. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I, but whatever. all I'm saying is, is that he could have answered that question. He could have said, "Hey, that happened a long time ago. I regret it." You know, you just own up to it. That's all you have I to agree. do. Just own I, up I agree. to it. But that's like a lot of politicians. They're just afraid. No, but you just say, yeah. okay, you know, yeah, I got arrested for drunk driving. Uh, I, uh, it was something I shouldn't have done. I did it many years ago or whatever, and I absolutely regret doing it and apologize for ever having done it. End of, and then you defang the whole question. But he didn't even answer right, that gone. question. He didn't even answer it. He kept avoiding it. I think she asked twice. Oh, no, no. I thought he did great with the IVF, though. I mean, the... the Bitching at him that it's it was not in vitro fertilization. He and his wife used some other kind of. Uh, who cares? Who cares? I, I mean, know. basically, it was. Uh, yeah. So a, he's like, hey, we just did what we had to do, and we support that, and our opponent doesn't. So yeah. I don't know. Let's go. It was uh, it was a way of having a I kid without the benefit of having sex, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Those poor people. You're terrible, Alex. No, All right, I'm no. moving along. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm not being terrible. I, I think that people should no, use no, that. You know, you know. Just, but I, I mean, he, he just, yeah. I think he's too much of a politician to know how to walk into a question and answer it. And you, the way you answer that is you, with the drunk thing, for instance, is, yeah, it happened and I regret it and I, I, I think it's terrible what I did. 
And I've never, it's never happened again. So obviously, I learned you know my what lesson. happens? Then the Republicans have like a soundbite on them, and they're going to play it on 52 <laughs> ads. Well, all so, over the so, so, you, you know, know that's, let them do it. You know, I big know, deal. I, big I, deal. They got to decide what they got to do. Well, but, I, I, you I know, think, there's a reason that people aren't always candid either. I, I think the problem is with people who are running for office, play it too safe. You know, they're afraid of saying something yeah, wrong that's true. That's rather true. than say rather than say so something yeah, right. 30 years ago. Yeah. 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 Did it happen there? I didn't even know about it. So I, I don't know. I, I think it was a long time ago. I do not know when it exactly happened, but it was a while ago. I'm sure it was longer than anybody can remember. OK. I'm so. sure that I kind of think I heard about it Did 10 you? years ago or something. Like that. You hear about it? So I, Charlie I, thing? Somehow I thought I heard about it. Well, you know, if, 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 this, is the wor if, this, if this is the worst they can get on this guy, okay, okay exactly. then uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm still going to vote for him. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, if, if Trump, I'll bet if Trump, Trump and Vance have DWIs on. Yeah. Trump doesn't drink. I don't think he ever drank. Yeah. No. His but if brother, Trump, if Trump like, had, was, a DUI, had a big it drink. What, It'd wait. be a beautiful DUI. It was the most beautiful DUI anybody ever had. <laughs> anybody ever had. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. There has never been a DUI like my DUI. It was yeah. a perfect DUI. Yeah. And Trump I drank, never done I drove, either, and yeah. I got pulled over. Yeah, well, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 they just don't, uh, they don't, uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Okay, let me put it that way. You know, yeah. so anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see. Let me just remove this guy one more time. And then I'm not going to remove him anymore. He can just sit there and wait for me to do nothing. Okay. Okay, it was 2006. Yeah. When he got arrested. for He got arrested. It doesn't say he ever got convicted. So I don't know if he pled out. I don't know what he did. But, uh, 2006. 2006 is 20 almost ago. 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm he was 31 years old. He went, oh, and he's driving pretty fast. 96 and a 55 so. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> did he come close? My, my question is, did he come close to killing anyone? And if he did, was it a Republican? That's right. You know. Alec. He uh, he did plead. He pleaded mm -hmm. to reduce charge of reckless driving, a misdemeanor, and he paid a two hundred dollar fine. Okay. So, yeah. You know, and he never got stopped again. Obviously. Yeah. You know. Not that we know of. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Big deal. Big deal. So you own up to it. You say I did a lot. It happened a long time ago, and I was thirty-one. I should have known better. I didn't. You know, and uh, mm. I've I learned my lesson. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does the vice president have to drive anymore? No. 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 He says he no longer <laughs> drinks then, alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Then, then he should say he can make me vice president, and I'll never drive drunk again. You never drive again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right, you're not. I, I don't tonight, think. You, oh yeah, you're not allowed to drive if you're president or vice president. No. Because I remember that uh, um, uh, Seinfeld was doing this comedians in cars getting coffee. Yes, yeah. And he was going to. Corvette in in the White House. All they could do was drive around <laughs> the uh, the Oval, you know. Uh, and uh, then he said, "Do you want to <clears throat> drive the car?" And he said, "I can't." Uh, because the the they won't let me. I can't drive a car. So for but what eight right. years he never could drive a car. Meanwhile, he had a he had a fancy car. He had a Corvette. Corvette, the, yeah. Oh no, no. Uh, Biden had a Corvette. Biden. Biden. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about uh, Obama. Uh, oh. And and yeah. Oh, and man. Obama said they never let me drive. I can't uh, I can't drive a car. They just won't let me. That's why I don't want to be. President, because I, yeah. I can't drive. Yeah, wouldn't that be terrible for you? You know, you love your little cars. You love uh, buying those. Uh... It's, you know, I had to take the keys from my grandfather, mm -hmm. and I drove him around though after. But I'm just like dreading the day that I'm like counting down the years, going, oh, my God, 
how many more years am I going to be able to drive, you know? Yeah, well, I'm I'm not driving anymore. You know, I stopped driving. Mm. Um, not that I had to, uh, but I just don't trust myself driving anymore at my age, you know? Uh, I mean, I, probably I could get in a car and drive okay. Probably. But I ain't taking the chance, you know? <laughs> And so I have uh, to pry the keys out of my cold, dead hands. Well, you like driving, right? Oh, yeah. I love driving. I mean, driving was one of the great pleasures that I had, you know? And I would go just about anywhere, but I never had a problem with a car, you know? But I think that now at this age, I think maybe I would not be as good as I was, okay? Well, the my, other thing my, is my business manager, who's now... What is he? I think he's 70. He's a rather 88. Uh, doesn't drive anymore. He One day he found he had a little little bumper thing. And he went, that's because I'm just not alert mm. enough to drive anymore. So he quit driving. And now his wife drives him everywhere. Mm. You know. I think the other part is that you, that you may not find once you actually drive is so much difficult, different than, than the way the cars were driven 10 years ago. Why is it different? I mean, I know that you have different mechanics, you know, you have different electronics and so on in it. But... Uh, we're, we're on the highway, and it says 55 miles an hour, okay? Mm -hmm. You see people going by 85 all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the way people are driving now that's driving you nuts. That's well, it, my Shecky, my friend Shecky kind of stopped driving a lot because he said it wasn't him. It was all the other people on the road that were the problem. You know, they're just crazy. It's absolutely it. Yep. What's happened to drivers? I mean, is, what, what's the mentality out there that suddenly has made everybody a terrible driver? I don't know. I think part of it is, I think a lot of people can actually um, figure out when the police are on the highway. And we <laughs> somehow pick it up and know it's time to slow down. Well, I mean, I just, I, you know, what were you going to say? I'm not talking about emotionally. I mean, technically, they, they can figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. And I... I commute and I see guy people flying through yeah. traffic. I see people going yeah. through traffic. If I look over there to see the person, a lot of times they're younger mm -hmm. and a lot of times they're just somebody you, you look at, they, they don't just care. They just, they just keep going. My, my thing is they cut somebody off and they, they cause an accident while the guy who cut them off just keeps going, you know? Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, but I just, uh, I don't know. I just don't know if I have the ability to drive anymore uh, without, you know, with any kind of, I imagine I could. I mean, I just, uh, the idea of getting behind the wheel of a car and then going out on the highway kind of scares me now, you know? I, I just drove to Chicago and back and I had a great time. I used to love yeah. driving. Driving was one of the great pleasures that I had, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to drive in, uh, and of course, Brian will know about this, in the back roads of Marin County. I love the back roads of Marin. But uh, I didn't have watermelon to eat while I was driving, but, you know. <laughs> Don't I drove them in Australia. Actually, I have some, uh, uh, I have some uh, watermelon in the refrigerator, even as we speak right now, and he's yeah, almost... He almost makes me want to run out to my to my refrigerator and get that watermelon. Yeah, it's good. Oh, is all watermelon seedless now? I guess it is. Yeah, but they still have the little seeds. They, oh. they still have little seeds. They say seedless, but they have little seeds. Well, they have those little white those little white seeds, but they're quite, they're dig quite digestible. But what I'm asking is. If you have seedless watermelon, where are the other watermelons yeah. going to come from? 
It's all chemicals, all juiced yeah. up. You saw the pictures of the chicken, the chicken 1950s, a little tiny scrawny thing, and then the chickens <laughs> like in the 80s, and now the chickens now, they're all like juiced up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The stuff we eat is so bad for us. It's so yeah. bad for us. Well, where can we eat the good stuff? Where can I get me a, a good chicken? Do I have to go to a chicken store, a poultry store or something? Where they'll chop the chicken's head off right there and you take it home and it's warm? You know? I mean, I remember there was a place uh, here in Manhattan down in the Lower East Side that you could go and actually get yourself a, uh, a uh, chicken. Uh, 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 you, 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 all with the feathers on and everything, and then they would like uh, uh, um, uh, chop the head off, and then they would de feather it, and then they would put it in a bag for you, and you take it home and you put it out, and it was warm. It was still warm, yeah. you know. But I don't know that you can buy chickens like that anymore. I don't know. In New York, you certainly have a lot of kosher places. You should be able to get good chicken. But I don't know kosher chicken. What, what's a, what's a kosher chicken? I don't know. More expensive. One, one it's, a co it's a co I know I, it, it's a chicken that doesn't eat ham. Right. <laughs> or, right. or a chicken that, that was circumcised or something like that. Uh, you know, on the West Coast we're having listeria outbreaks here. Watermelons and cantaloupes well, are warning people. Well, they have listeria here too. Yeah. Yeah. And we are also Yelling. we also have uh, let's see here the mosquitoes are going crazy. We got the oh, yeah. uh, Nile virus uh you know. But they've sprayed yeah. they they the other night they they sprayed my entire neighborhood. Uh yeah. and we've got a swamp down the street Ooh. called the, the oh. Harlem Mirror and they spray that, you know. And they get rid of the uh, mosquitoes. They kill the mosquitoes. For a day or two. Remember the med flies? Remember the med flies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Remember they used to come? They, I remember we lived in Redwood City and the med fly, everyone had to go inside and they 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 cruised around with the, the planes spraying for med flies. That's right. I remember that. As kids, they did that, huh? Yeah. When yep. we were kids. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, at least. Yeah. Med okay. flies. I they remember that. They just developed airplanes when I was a kid. <laughs> huh? Huh? I said they just developed airplanes when I was a kid. I don't get that. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, but I still don't get the joke. There is none. Uh, there, there is, is none? none? Okay, there good. No I'm glad joke. you felt the same way, Jeff, because I couldn't... Well, there, there is no joke to it. It was just a little bit funny to me. I, I teased other people about, you know, I said, oh, you know, did they have planes or did they have cars when that happened? But now that I'm getting older, I'm in the same book, to, in the same place, too. You know, some kid asked me the other day, he says, something about me, my age or something like that. He says, you look 50. I said, thank you. And, uh, and he says, did they have cars when you were a kid? Uh, I said, I don't know. Did he and really he say that? Day. Did he yeah. really say that? Yeah, you know, except for it was in San Francisco. And the next thing out of his mouth was, do you have a glass pipe? I broke my pipe to, to smoke some more meth. These methamphetamine guys, some guy came up to me one time a few years ago and said, you're fat, old, and ugly. And I said, you know, I can fix all that. You're, you know, you're just killing yourself with this methamphetamine shit. You know, you well, meth is, meth is no good for you. That's no. bad stuff, right? Yeah. But I, I, I was, I was discussing with Marjorie the other day, what drugs are bad, what drugs are good? Okay. Now, like, for instance, we all know marijuana is okay. Marijuana, there's nothing really dangerous about marijuana. Okay. But now we have a thing called ecstasy. Remember ecstasy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was sure. it dangerous or wasn't it dangerous? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I had a number of doctors tell me that it wasn't dangerous at all. You mm. keep If you keep fluids in you, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Plus, get off, get a, don't sit on the rug. You'll start making love to it. You know, you'll start touching it and it feels so good. It's, you know, I was never like that. The only thing I liked was my friend had a marble floor 
And so the floor was so cool. Oh my God, I would lie down on that thing. And it feels like, oh my gosh, so cool. Well, I had this one woman I knew who was into ecstasy, okay? And so I'd never tried it. So she said, you want to try it? And I said, well, I said, uh, is it dangerous or anything? She said, no, it's no problem at all. So we did it and we went to a hot tub place and did the, uh, the ecstasy. Boy, was that fun. The love drug. That was some great sex, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And on your way out, you found out she wasn't even with you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, 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 you know, so ecstasy wasn't a problem. Now, look, get some other drugs. Of course, we agree that meth is terrible. Yep. Okay, to begin with, your teeth fall out. You know, that's or you that, grind your teeth. Or you grind your teeth. Well, I grind my teeth anyway, so. Oh, you and know. you're not a meth. Yeah, and I'm not a meth. Now, let's get to some other drugs. How about cocaine? Is cocaine really dangerous? So, I don't know. Lose your job. Huh? <laughs> you lose your job. <laughs> yeah, you lose your job. No, but I mean. Lose it, your sleep. Your sleep is very important. Well, you know, yeah, I I always was able to sleep on coke. Mm. Yeah, yeah. When I'm tired, I'm tired. I just go to sleep, you know. But it, it I never thought that, uh, that that when I thought about it the other day, I went, you know, I did it for a couple of years. Then one day I just stopped it. What was dangerous, you know? I mean, some people get addicted to things because they have an addictive personality and they, they could get addicted to, you know, chocolate, right? Uh, they can get addicted. And Marjorie, for instance, I think has a pretty addictive personality. So I, we, we try to keep her away from just about everything, you know. But I, she likes her pot. You know, she likes it. We, we have a vape, you know, that we use. And I keep it by the bed at night. It helps me go to sleep. You know, so I mean, there are drugs. There, there are drugs that, like, uh, I'll tell you, a drug that was misrepresented, and that's what caused it to be dangerous in a lot of cases was heroin. Uh, heroin, in and of itself, if if you're getting a good, a decent dose, and you're not, uh, you're, you're you're not getting. Uh, 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 something that would make you overdose on it, uh, really was not one of the more terrible drugs. The problem was they, they, they created a lot of myths about it. And, um, I, and this is nothing that should make anybody go out and say, oh, well, then I think I'll go out and try heroin. No, don't. It's an extremely addictive drug, but it's not immediately addictive. It takes about six weeks before you get addicted to heroin. And then it, it's a lot of trouble to get off of. And here's the reason it's a trouble to get off of. What it does is it replaces the endorphins in your system. And the endorphins are a chemical that is produced. Um, well, I'm trying to think of when it, it gets produced. Okay. Uh, it gets produced, uh, for instance, if you're running, runners, when they run, they get a runner's high, and the runner's high is endorphins. So if you use heroin, your endorphin-producing things in your system shut off because it's getting satisfied by the heroin. And that's why it takes people like up to a year to get off of heroin because what happens is the endorphins don't start kicking in till you've been off of it for about a year. So that's the trouble with heroin, and that's what causes the addiction. Uh, am I wrong, uh, 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 Alan? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, most heroin gets into this country in cow shit. And then... We wait, 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 wait a minute, in cow shit? Cow shit or shit, whatever they want, comes across the border and they you buy a little chunk and you you ever see them put the spoon, put a little chunk of this brown stuff on the spoon and yeah. heat it up. Then they put a cotton ball on top of it. And when it turns liquid, they suck it through the cotton ball 
That's supposed to get the impurities out of it. A lot of people that, that do heroin it, inject it and they end up with hepatitis. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, um, they end up with sores. Okay. It isn't. Heroin is not, heroin is not good because A, you don't know what you're getting. That's yeah. right. If the government were to suddenly make it legal and start dispensing it, then you would have a, 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 a proper amount that wouldn't be dangerous to you because you'd know what you were getting. But because it's an underground drug, it's by making it underground and making it illegal that has made it the most dangerous. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So, you know. But no, folks, don't go out and try heroin because you don't know mm -hmm. what you're getting and it's extremely addictive if you... If you go more than about six weeks and you really get a habit, you can get a habit pretty fast on it. Uh, you, you will, it, it, your endorphin system will shut down, and that's what the problem is with it. You know. So, any other drugs that are not well, bad for a, you? It's actually the, the 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 first narcotics, like codeine, for instance. Codeine is made from opium, which heroin's a, a, an opiate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but obviously, codeine is a, uh, you know, a, a lab done, it, it, you know, it's, it's it's a prescription pill yeah. or, or injection or something like that. It's done properly. They know what dose and stuff like that. What they're doing, they're killing off a lot of their people nowadays that are on methane and on heroin. They're loading it up with fentanyl. I have no idea why you want to kill your 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 customers like this. Yeah. They do it all the time. This is a fentanyl crisis is out of control. And if somebody wanted fentanyl, they should just go buy it. It's um so it's like uh you know, four or five hundred percent stronger than morphine. Mm -hmm. And so morphine, you take a, a two milligram pill and that kills the pain. It's so strong. But this is a lot stronger. And so you can you can overdose on two micrograms forget about milligrams micrograms of of fentanyl if you're not careful well the problem is today you know i when i talked about a moment ago about cocaine and whether it was dangerous or not in and of itself cocaine is mildly addictive and not particularly you know uh uh, uh horrible but the problem is that uh they are now cutting this stuff with fentanyl. Yeah. And it's the fentanyl that's dangerous, the fentanyl that will kill you. Here comes Bree. I think it's Bree. Let me turn myself up here just in case it isn't Bree. But let's see here. Let's make sure it is Bree. How many E's did he have? Huh? He has enough E's. E's. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see him yet. He's not showing up. Bree, it says he's joining, but he hasn't shown up. Uh, you know, he's on this Wi-Fi thing. He's probably eating in a re Asian restaurant. So. Well, well, we'll. I'll keep my face up for a while here. So the trouble with cocaine before they started putting fentanyl in it was, it can increase your heart rate and stuff like that. You can have a heart attack or something. Mm -hmm. So you, you had to be careful how pure it was, and so nobody can take a hundred percent um uh, uh cocaine and and use it you, it would just kill you like fentanyl you know you'd overdose usually most most cocaine that's used in this country is you know like six to ten percent and then what do they cut it with you know and that's 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 where the danger gets in what they the cutting agents could be you know mm -hmm. anything from you know whatever makes a powder right you know, I used to know somebody that cut the cocaine with fiberglass. Boy, their nose would bleed. That's supposed to be a joke. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but, yeah, but, no, that's, uh, that's not true. yeah. So, but, but uh, ecstasy, but ecstasy, the same thing, right? My, my friend who you got to mm -hmm. party together back in the day. And, well, you uh, know, ecstasy is easy. You turn it into, it's a clear liquid in, in, in a bottle and you give everybody a teaspoon of it. And then everybody's in love with each other. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to watch out That's if like, it's all men in one room. <laughs> yeah. I don't know That's what's happening. GHB. With... Bree seems to be having problems joining us today. Wow. You know? 
Hmm. Um, I, I, but I think it's I think it's definitely Bree, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't look like uh, he's able to join. Ohio. It just says joining, joining. Bree entered the waiting room. Here we go. We admit him again, but nothing. He's having all kinds of trouble. So hmm. I don't know. I, hmm. I, I I I think I'll probably get rid of him. Right. Oh, there we are. There's Bree. Bree, are you there, Bree? Let me just turn my face on here for a second, Bree, 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 Bree. just to make sure that we get Bree on, and it is Bree. It doesn't. I don't think it is Bree. I don't and, think uh, it is. Huh? Probably trying to line up his Zoom bombing equipment. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Well, I don't. I don't. Uh, he's not there. Are you there, Bree? Can you hear us, Bree? This is as bad as getting Jeff on. Well, I think <laughs> I, I think that it's somebody trying I'm to. Jeff. I think it's somebody trying to be Bree. I think so too. Who is it? No, so, Bree usually can get on, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Bree. What next time? If you're listening to us, Bree. Next time you call, add your uh, your uh, uh, initial to Bree. Okay. Or put your social security number in there. Yeah. Well, here we go again. You know, I just got rid of him. Well, let's see. His name. He now has a a, a, a box on the screen, and it does say B R E E. But oh, now he's gone. All right, went away. Yeah. Yeah. I I have no idea why we're having trouble with him, but mm. it might not might not be Bree. It might be somebody else trying to be Bree. Yeah. Well, now you got this new software that knocks off all these uh, Zoom bombers and stuff. I think that worked. I don't have any software that does that. I, I know, I know, but I'm just saying. Oh, it says, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that software, the new stuff, and it, it actually has cut down the number of people that have uh, tried. Yeah. That. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what happens is I've I've got in fact I've got the guy's number. The guy's been trying to call me. I actually have his his IP address. So you know, uh, and I have turned it into uh, to Zoom. But whether they've done anything about it, I don't. I really don't know. You know. But anyway, so if anybody else wants to call that I know, go right ahead. Mm. You know. So. Um, but anyway, anyway, so, um, um, uh, did you, you didn't watch the interview tonight, right, Alan? You, we established that? I didn't. No, no we didn't establish did, it. Did, yeah, uh, did, by by the way, by the way, you do know that, uh, that, uh, um, Amy's not going to be on tonight. Right. Yeah, we'll know you that. sent us a text uh, and I called her. She wasn't feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. She, she said mm -hmm. it might be allergies. It might be a cold. I said, it's probably allergies. This time of the year. Yeah, allergies are killing everybody. Yeah, here's another Who's doing the interviewing? Who's doing the interviewing for this? Uh, it was Dana Bash. Mm. Uh, and uh, actually, she's not the best person they could have gotten to do this. You know, uh, there's a woman that's on at night, and I forget her name now, that's on CNN, who's very good. And she should have done the interview. Because she is relentless. In other words, she that wouldn't have. Interview? Well, she wouldn't have let Waltz get away with not answering that question. She would have just kept asking it till she got an answer. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it, so I don't know what that. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know what it is with these people doing interviews, but there's an art to interviewing, and one of them is that you're relentless, you know, and that you 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 keep asking a question until somebody answers it. You don't let them get away with not answering the question. Right. Especially if it's a fact, you know, it's not not something that they're trying to stir up. It's something that that it happened, and it, you know, somebody's going to have to uh, address it one day, right? Somebody else is going to bring this up. Yeah, but you know, especially but, since he yeah, didn't answer it. So. But what you do, what you do, and it's very important, is you keep uh, asking the question. You know, you don't let them get away with not answering it. Yeah. Well, now we've got Ray. Sure. <laughs> well, hold on a second. I'll put my face. I think uh, I'll, I'll you're, you're, you're the only one on YouTube. What? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah okay. I, okay. So we're still only 
me on YouTube. Okay. So we will admit Ray, and let's see what happens with admitting Ray. We're not going to see a picture. If it's Ray, Ray, is it you? There it is, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is Ray. Let's applaud Ray. Hello. Yes, uh, it's yeah. a real person. A real it's not person. a fake Ray. Your volume's loud. Yeah. Well, no, okay. it's, uh, yeah. turn it down just a little bit there. All right. How you doing, Ray? Oh, uh, I'm doing well, thanks. Did you Good. see the interview tonight? How's that? Uh, no, I didn't. Nobody saw the interview. Nope. Oh, what then? What did I watch it for? <laughs> no, I, wa I watched it because I figured all you people would call up and go, "Did you see the interview, Alex?" And I wanted to be able to say yes. <clears throat> Are you talking about your interview before this show? No, the interview with Kamala Harris and, oh. on CNN. Oh no, I didn't, oh, no. And, and no, I didn't see it. You with undoubtedly Coach? missed. No. You undoubtedly missed my interview with Kamala Harris. <laughs> I did. I did. Is my volume okay now? Yeah, your volume's yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah. All right. How you been, Ray? We haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I'm I'm okay. You know, I went to Yellowstone for a couple of weeks with my Wonder. wife. Yeah. God, they were bored. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I can't complain. Yeah. So you, 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 you a couple yeah. weeks. Wow. Yeah. Really? That's a about lot a week and a half. Week and a half. Really? But I also visited my nephew in uh, Jackson, Wyoming. Yeah, but what were you? Oh, what were you? What were you did, what, did you? Did you go up there in a camper or something like that, or did you? No, my uh, a friend of ours has property there, and we <clears throat> she has a friend, and we stayed in a house in mm -hmm. uh, Gardner, Montana, which is right outside of. Mm -hmm. The west entrance, I think, to did Yellowstone. They, did, did I believe. I believe this is Bree. I believe this is Bree. Let's see here. I'm they just had a, gonna. They had a, a, a big explosion of water there from one of the, the things. Is that still closed off? Uh, like a month ago, a lot of people got burnt and stuff like that from one of the. What are you the... talking about? In... Oh yeah, one of the uh, one of the geysers yeah. exploded. Right. Uh, no, no, it's not. I don't think it's closed off, but yeah, okay. that, it, yeah, yeah, geyser. Yeah. I couldn't think of the name. In July, yeah, that yeah. happened. I saw yeah. that geyser. Yeah. It, it it has a it's it go. It's either like it blows like between four days and fifty years. Really? Wow. Yeah, you have no idea whether it's going to be four yeah. days or fifty years. Yeah. Hey, there's Bree. Okay. I were you, right were next you having to trouble it. getting on Bree a few moments ago? We can't oh, hear. We can't. Saying. We we can't hear you, Bree. We can't hear you. No. Using. Uh, oh, there. You. I was using a tablet. Now I'm using my laptop. So this is a Core i7. Oh. You know, and should. I mean. Yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, but now you got on. Okay. We see. We've had some people try to get on tonight who aren't the genuine article and. So I, I, when you suddenly you weren't get, able to get get on, it was making me wonder whether you were really Bree, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting ready. I'm packing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go up to Da Nang, Vietnam tomorrow. Why are you going Ooh, to Da Nang? What are you going to Da Nang for? You know, uh, I've been to Hanoi and I've been to Saigon. I've never been to Da Nang, and every I see it in the, you know, the tourism ads every once in a while so i thought it is, i gotta yeah it, it's like my it's like south beach miami when you drive oh, down really? there where the beach is and okay. when i was there the last time they were just finishing up some of those hotels along the beach you go there like at 5 a.m go to the beach at 5 a.m when the sun is just coming up and it's full of all the locals and mm -hmm. then they watch the sun come up and then they shower and then they go to work they exercise out there and they go to work you want to know uh, You got to be careful. Isn't that tsunami time? Isn't it amazing <laughs> that in my lifetime I've seen us go from a nation that was at war in a very just yeah. bloody war, okay, yeah. to a place everybody wants to make a destination as a vacation spot. Yeah, I, I had friends who just toured there um, last month, and it was a shame that our you know our timings didn't cross. But yeah, they also went uh, from Hanoi to Saigon. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, what makes it like South Beach? 
all the hotels they have lined up there. The oh, road, okay. all the the road on the where the beach is is so clean. Oh, okay. And they they just they, and then the beach is so beautiful. And then the, yeah, I've been, it, yeah, I've been to South Beach. I was trying to figure out because there certainly weren't a lot of Asians in South Beach, so I was trying to see why it was like it. So okay. I guess. There's a lot of Asians in Da Nang, for sure. Yeah. I'm sure that was my point. That was my whole point, yes. Yeah, but okay. I mean, isn't it amazing how in our in our lifetime, I mean, hell, how, how long was it when the war was going on there, for crying out loud? 60s? 70s? Huh? 70s. Well, for, 70s. well, I mean, since the, it started with France, mm. and then yeah. we took over. Yeah. It was France in the 50s, well, and I know then we took France, over... Yeah. And then we took over in the late '60s, yep. right? And it went till '74, I think. Right? Yep, you're right. Well, actually, it went longer than that, but we stopped the draft in '73 or '74, and then everyone was out by like '76 or something like that. I think yeah, but, it, it, is but isn't had, it, isn't it amazing that the, the, the places that we won these <clears throat> towns you're talking about that were, you know, these were war zones? Okay. Yeah. We now yeah. talk about as great. Destinations, okay. you know. China money, China. Is it China money? Oh, we go, we we go to uh, yeah. Japan all the time. Now, let me I'm ask you: is, is, is where see where where Bree's head is? The, the bridge that's on one side of him, that that dragon bridge. Actually, flames come out the mouth at nighttime, and that bridge is so beautiful at nighttime. That's a, it's a river that goes through Da Nang. The water is so calm, and then all of the all of the buildings there that have the lights going on, mm -hmm. you see the reflection. I have so many pictures of that. So beautiful. Wow. wow. That, then you got Asian them. girls everywhere. So but, but yeah. it's a win-win. Uh, what, what's wrong with that? Yeah. You think one week is okay to stay there? Depends on how many girlfriends you want. Oh, hand bridge. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And that, then up on the top, the hand bridge, that's up in the hills, in Bana Hills. Oh. Then you take this tram, you take a tram, and it just goes on forever. You go up there, and it's like a whole different town up there. And, mm -hmm. and they have this hand bridge, the golden bridge. Yeah, that's, it, that's clever. So that's, that's a whole day at Bana Hills. Yeah. So yeah. what are the hands made out of? Are they actually supporting? It's all the stone or something. Yeah, it's stone or something. Wow, that's neat. Yeah. yeah. Do they use U.S. dollars or the or the Vietnamese dong? <laughs> Uh, I was with uh, my ex, so it was Vietnamese dong. <laughs> you know, yeah, they had okay. all money. So. Yeah, because I haven't been there in maybe 10, um, 10 years. I was in Hanoi uh, oh, yeah. in, uh, in 2016, I think. So eight years? Yeah. You're so making it sound like a wonderful place to go for a vacation. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go single, though. You, you don't want to go single? I, no, I, I mean, come back with like three wives. <laughs> yeah, really. I have a friend of, of a friend. Problem, is... <laughs> now, is that because they, they all, all convince you to marry them? No, because they're all cute and they don't know that they're cute, you know, because they just think that they're like all over the place, you know, so. <laughs> so I, I, had a, I had a Vietnamese girlfriend when I was in my 20s. And I and I said, you know, you're really beautiful. And she said, well, so are you. And I went, yeah, right, whatever. And she says, do you know that that Americans think we're exotic, but we think Americans are exotic. And I thought, wow, that's okay. They're like the opposite of track thing. And I've talked to other Asian women, and they say the same thing. They find Americans exotic, like we find them exotic. I I I used to work with these two guys, uh, and in the late 80s and they went to thailand for vacation and they both came back married uh-huh <laughs> yeah but thailand you have to know what is there on one night what is there on one like, night what bar it what is there at that night because every bar has something different and you don't want to be surprised yeah by with something the between the legs. Wait, the a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Explain that to me. You don't, you don't want to be surprised by what? Lady boys. In Lady Thailand, boys. Oh. in Thailand, they have bars, and they have bars, and you have to know today's Tuesday, so there may be a uh, you know thingy hanging yeah, around. A, you just do a package check. No, they'll they will they'll <laughs> kick in the balls. Oh. They also that know actually, how to hide that. Free that let me, ask you, mic, you, let me ask you, though. Are these guys really good looking? Yeah. 
<laughs> and you had a couple of beers? Come on. You can, oh, I can never t- you can't even tell half the time. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at the this pictures. Just think, <laughs> that's why I don't want to go there. No thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. these were real women, but one of them one of them it worked out, the other one it didn't. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I have friends who are trans. You have friends who are trans? Yeah. Yeah, I had some friends who were trans, sure. too. I mean, you meet them all the time in Southeast Asia. They're, they're yeah. fun. A lot of times they're good at pool. They like to drink. Um, I don't think I've ever met a trans that had, like, a bad personality. I think no, me they, either. I mean, sometimes they're a little odd, but they're always Especially kind of Especially when you're in bed with them. <laughs> well, I mean, I knew I knew several very famous trans people here in New York. You know, mm. um, um, who were all, in fact, if you ever listen to the song um, uh, by Lou Reed, w- yeah, Walk Wild on the Wild Side, side. The Wild side yeah. th- there are four, three women named in that, in that, yep. uh, in that song, and I knew every one of them. Oh, uh, boy, you didn't get around, did you? How well <laughs> did you know him? That's the question. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, uh, what, what oh, is, look, there you go. Uh, okay, yeah. is that a guy? That is a guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, but I, uh, uh, no, I, you know, I knew them, and uh, uh, they were, uh, they all were different, you know, as I used to tell the story that they were all different. I mean, there was Hollywood Lawn, who was kind of a comic version of a woman, okay, and there was Jackie Curtis, and it was m- more more like a guy, you know, who just was wearing dresses and tried to look like a woman but wasn't really a woman. And then there was uh, Candy Darling, who was... Uh, how can I describe it? She was gorgeous. She was just gorgeous. And whenever I would meet up with Candy, I would respect Candy as a woman because that's what she did, and she did it with great dignity and so on and so forth. She died of cancer. Um, <laughs> But I thought the world of candy. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I knew some of the great uh, trans women or trans guys of all time. And none of these trans, by the way, none of them had converted to women. They were remain guys. None you know? of them had the surgery. Yeah. None of them had the surgery. Yeah. I have a, I have a good friend who became a woman. Um, I don't know. He... If he ever got the surgery, he wanted to, but he couldn't afford it, and I haven't talked to him or she now. I don't know. I don't know. Well, as trans, it. many times just enjoy being trans and don't yeah. want to be a woman. You know, they don't want to lose the package. I right. know that, for instance, Hollywood Lawn, at least, and Jackie Curtis got laid all the time. Women were just crazy about them, and they're they were crazy about women. So in spite of the fact that they looked like women or dressed like women, they they were they weren't gay, you know. Yeah. And and being trans didn't mean you were gay, either. Mm-hmm. That was another yeah. mistake people made. But let's get yep. back to how sexy women are in the Middle East, okay? Yeah. In the Middle East. <laughs> Middle East. Excuse me. In the Far East. In the uh, Middle East. In the Middle East, you can't tell because their face no. is covered. Yeah, no, you can. they all look like camels. Like comedians yeah, says that you know, because of like the whole Vietnamese war, Vietnam War, he said, yeah, maybe one day we'll be thinking all these Iraqi girls are so cute, and you have a guy who only likes Iraqi girls and all this stuff. Yeah, in the seventies we had that. There were a lot of Iraqi girls at the University of Texas in the seventies. Well, a lot of them have dark skin, and so I, you know what. Around here, we have a lot, as Brian knows, here in the Bay Area, we have a lot of of Middle Eastern people and stuff like that. And sometimes they get hit by by kids or stuff like that. Well, have you, have you noticed? Have so you start... noticed that by all the um, how can I what, what's the term I want to use the uh, the mixed breed now here in this country? Yeah. How beautiful the women are getting. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, absolutely ravishing. I mean, they—they you can't tell what country they're from anymore. <clears throat> but man, they're gorgeous now. We have much more gorgeous women today than we ever had when I was growing up. You, you know, you know I, yeah, for sure. For sure. I went to uh, lunch today with our 
friends. They're they're Chinese, and they they came into San Francisco, where they started and mm -hmm. stayed there for a long time, and ultimately came to Connecticut. And, uh, what a change! I have to say, I yeah. have never seen as so many beautiful women as I saw in Wyoming and Montana. Oh really? Wow! Oh wow. my God, every everywhere you're going to the wrong places buddy. you know where i saw the hottest group of people in my life hold on to your yeah. seats guys the republican convention yeah really yeah well they're all virgins uh, no i uh, no, no they were yeah, right they were i'm telling you these women were like uh, uh i i went with uh, albert Reynoso to the one the republican convention here in new york city and we sat there and we just went these are the most gorgeous women I've seen in my whole life in this country. Why do why why do they do this in their Republicans? And I said probably to get even with us, you know. I mean, you're sitting there drooling over some beautifully gorgeous woman, and you know she's just the worst political human being alive, you know. Yep. But it's kind of like about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Huh? She's gorgeous. She's just gorgeous, Marjorie. She isn't delicious. Marjorie, I mean, no, 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 every no. Neanderthal guy just thinks she's really hot. No, the other lady. What's the other one? Bobert. Well, actually, Bobert? I, I would have sex. I would Bobert. have sex with Marjorie Taylor Greene to make her feel bad about herself. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to give her a ball gag first to shut her up. Yeah. Ugh. But uh, 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 Bobert's pretty hot. Too. Bobert's pretty hot. Who was the one that? And, uh, and she smokes weed. Who's the one that was giving a hand job during him? Yeah. Uh, that during, was Bobert. Was that Bobert? Yeah. 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 I watched she, a movie with her. She's a hottie. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, why do they have to be? You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's kind of like you. You know. It's kind of like if I were if if, if if it was World War II and there was like a Nazi woman and I found her hot, you know, I would feel very guilty. <laughs> I would feel no, especially after you got done with her and she Democratic was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, but anyway, so uh, so you're going on vacation then, right, uh, uh, Bree? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's the national day here this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and and then it will uh, sort of extend into the next week. A lot of people will sort of chill out. So that's where I'll go. I, yeah. How and, far? Uh, how? I had a, what's the plane flight? How long is the plane oh, flight? Um, that's a good question. I didn't really check it. It's probably two two hours. Uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Man, I love and that. And how much does it cost? Okay, if you if you book in advance, which, which I didn't do because <laughs> I just decided yesterday, uh, I was going to go back to Thailand, but I'm kind of tired of it. Um, so if you book in advance, you can get it for about $150 to $200 round trip. Really? Uh, but I didn't do that. So. Wow. Because yeah. I well, just I just booked a flight to I booked a flight to Paris uh, just the last couple of days for November, all right. And uh, what is it? Uh, they're charging me. Uh, 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 f well, we're doing premium, premium uh, uh, economy economy, and they're charging us fifteen hundred bucks a piece. Hey, Alex, hmm. I'm going to Paris next okay. week. Really. Yeah. How much is your flight costing? I don't know. My wife, my wife bought it on this French airline called B that we always take. It's cheap. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll have to do that. Hey, I got to play, play the theme here. Yeah. Yeah. The program is over with, folks. It's Geschwinkto. Uh I want to thank uh, Jeff for being here tonight. Always a pleasure, Jeff. And uh, I want to thank the lovely and attractive... Uh, Charlie, what is your what does your shirt say? Come to the math side. We have pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, always good talking to you, Brian. Always good having you here. And uh, also, uh, Alan, thank you for your participation in tonight's gathering. Uh, Ray, you should call us more often. You know, I will. I okay. Will. 
And yeah. uh, Bree, of course, have a nice have a nice trip. Okay, maybe you can like uh, uh, call us from there yeah. and join the show. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there will be no citizen panel right after this because uh, uh, Amy is not well, so uh, we'll uh, we'll let her have the night off, and then we'll uh, see you again uh, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, uh, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.